The first quarter of 2024 has seen a notable increase in fraud and forgery within Nigeria's payment system, particularly in point-of-sale transactions. Now, according to the fraud and forgery report in Nigerian banks for the first quarter of this year, by the Financial Institutions Training Center, FITC, POS fraud cases set by 31.12% during this period. In the fourth quarter of last year, there were 2,683 reported cases of fraud associated with POS terminals. But this number rose to 3,518 cases by the first quarter of this year, making up 30.6% of the total fraud cases recorded in the quarter. Now, despite the rise in fraud cases, the amount of money involved in POS fraud decreased by 37.74% to 376.59 million naira, and the amount lost to POS fraud also saw a significant decline of 68.34% to 4.63 million naira on a quarterly basis. While the increase in financial losses may indicate improved detection and prevention measures, the overall increase in fraud cases emphasizes the need for continued vigilance. Now, on the show, today we will be focusing on the importance of staying vigilant as incidents of POS fraud have increased by 31.12% this first quarter of this year due to the proliferation of terminals. Welcome to Business Insight. I am Justin Akadone, your host. All right, now, the surge in point-of-sale fraud can be directly linked to the widespread adoption of these terminals by both merchants and consumers. As a cash-driven Nigerian economy, the convenience and efficiency of POS transactions have made them a popular choice. However, this increased usage has also made POS systems a prime target for fraudsters seeking to exploit vulnerabilities in the system. I have that state surveyor and public affairs analyst Mustafa Ewinla joining me now more for discussion on this matter. Good morning to you, uh, Mustafa. Thanks for joining us on Thanks this for discuss. Thank All you right. Me. You will agree with me that um, uh, financial inclusion has actually deepened over time since uh, the lockdown. Uh, 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 what did you call it again? That was uh, COVID-19. COVID-19. Yes, yeah, since then, you know, Nigerians really started, uh, you know, finding ways to uh, be included and all that. And there was a proliferation of uh, POS transactions. Even till now, most Nigerians actually go to buy money, in quotes, to do one transaction or the other. But then, the reports we are getting is really not um, a savory one, uh, because uh, just this quarter, uh, first quarter in 2024, there were reports of about um, a surge of about 31.12%. What's, what's your opinion, really? Okay, thank you. So I think this is a very critical topic. Uh, mm -hmm. That's because it has to do with money. Mm -hmm. And uh, generally, I think POS terminals became more popular during the time of COVID. Mm. At the time where Nigerians couldn't go out and couldn't really have access to the banking, the banking house. Mm. So, uh, but it's very sad and it's very sad and unfortunate to see the increased amount of fraud cases with POS terminals lately. Mm. As at the first quarter of this year, we had a total, of, total amount of about 3,500 fraud cases mm. associated with POS terminals. Mm. And if you hear one of the reports as we just spoke now, a lot of these POS terminals are not registered. Mm. According to the CBN and the NEFF, which is the Nigerian Ele Electronic Fraud Forum, mm. which is a ham working with CBN to ensure that that area is you know, regulated, mm. there are only about, about, from the first quarter of this year, there are only about 4.9 million registered POS terminals, mm. but I put it to you that we have well over 10 million POS terminals all over the country right now. That I'm, if you, out of that 10 million, 4.9 are registered, the others are not registered. Mm. If you, and that, that's evident from what the other speakers spoke about just now and from the report. So I think um, it is very important that the CBN, the NEFF, and also AMBAM, the Association of you know, Mobile Money yeah. and Banking Agent, also tries to do a lot to sanitize that sector. I know that a lot of the process involved in re getting these POS terminals, I think you have to you know, register with some of the agents. Uh, we have quite a number of them. Mm. You register, you fund the account. When you fund the account, 
you apply for the POS, mm. then you and within 48 hours or thereabouts, it's delivered to you. Yes. But I think that the process involved in getting this POS terminal should be more stringent. Mm. We are in the world in Nigeria today. We have BVN, we have NIN. A lot of these businesses are small scale businesses. You see a tomato seller by the roadside mm. these days have POS. Mm. And instead of using that POS to just transact based on the tomato he or she is selling, yes. she starts to do money exchange where people mm. come to withdraw. She becomes a bank on her own. Mm. And <laughs> so I think, so a lot of people are using that, those POS terminals for all the wrong reasons. Mm. And that's why the fraud cases are very alarming. Okay, let me butt in here because I have had the opportunity to speak with um, Amban uh, yes, over please. time on this issue and specifically the proliferation of um, POS, uh, you know, operators, and they had said over time that ordinarily, like you had also uh, mentioned, these uh, operatives or operators, they should um, be registered with um, maybe uh, the bank, uh, the bank yeah. agents and the, the money agents, points, yeah. the OPs and the pumpies yes. of this world. But oftentimes, you know, they are supposed to use for merchant transaction, you know, just to buy and sell and exchange cash. Yeah. But over time now, they now do. You know, all they that do, stuff they is do banking transactions. Payment and so, you know, so, so how do we how do we get this right? Because over time they said they have started um, a joint tax force uh, and they did like um, a storm in the Balindi market. And um, but just just this year alone, the number is increasing compared to what we have last year. Is last it like year. the sensitization is not enough, or that uh, these are fraud stars have gotten wiser? So um, whether you like it or not, as technology is advancing. Mm. Frosters are also trying to devise means of survival too. Mm. So the technology is moving forward. Frosters are also thinking, you know, day in day out on how to, you know, cheat the system. So if you if you if you see the spate of increase in the rate of fraudulent transactions with POS, you mm -hmm. understand that the CBN and the NEFF and even AMBAM also. Even our security agencies need to be on the, at, at the top of their game mm. to make sure that these things are tracked down. Now, the, in recent times, uh, CBN is trying to come up with a future on POS terminals where mm. they can detect fraudulent transactions. Mm. So I think they are finalizing that process within now and the next couple of months. Okay. It's, already in the, it's already in the pipeline. So if you want to do certain transactions on POS terminals, there are certain limits where you will get to, you'll be required certain informations mm. to uh, like a KYC to ensure that mm. the person carrying out that transaction is the actual owner of that fi that ATM card or, you know, or the funds in that account. Mm -hmm. So if you're not able to answer, for example, I think there should be a limit yes. to the amount of transactions you can do on the POS terminal. Mm. So, but these days, I think, I, I, I don't think there's any limit yet because mm. I remember one time I had to travel out of the country and I bought my ticket from a POS agent just by the roadside. She paid my bought my ticket for me from a POS. <laughs> so you understand? So I, so I imagine what kind of the volume of transactions they are able to do. So mm. I think, first of all, they need to be regulated. Mm. And a lot of awareness and enforcement needs to happen. Okay. Then also, there needs to be a limit to the amount of transactions you can do. So, but if that is done, so in the, around April this year, mm. the CAC, Corporate Affairs Commission, issued out a memo to say that all POS terminals must be registered. Mm. And I think the deadline is September this year. Yes, so as a POS vendor, you, you, your business must be duly registered. Mm. So if that is done, there's easy to, it's going to be very easy to trace okay. fraudulent transactions. Right. But a lot of them right now are not registered. And that's why they're just doing what they like. I think, I think the issue is uh, the regulation because right now the case is actually in court. So I don't want to get so into it because of unsubjudice. Um, but the, the issue is that Amban is claiming that um, most of this... Uh, POS um, agents or operators sh have already registered. They are not really businessmen per se. Some of them, they are uh, sub agents of this bank agent. And indeed, yeah. and of course, um, those, ba that's, those agents should ordinarily have um, yeah, details. the details. So asking them to re register is like um, a double registration. But then let's talk about KYC. We cannot really emphasize that um, yeah. so um, en enough. Uh, know your customers. Even the banks are very big on KYC when you want to open accounts. But you find out that most times uh, uh, the issue is that you go to random locations, you see a POS with no physical location. They cannot yeah. really be traced. Uh, you know, some of them, they have registered with this. Um, bank agents and uh, at a particular location but they don't stay in their locations they are just like almost everywhere you know each place you just go pos 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 okay. as if it's like um, 
they are selling essential commodities. But what do we begin to do? How do we ensure that these KYC uh, protocols are actually met and um, so that we can trace these people to where we can get them? Because there have been cases of um, you know, security indictment in the northern part of the country, how POS operators have actually worked with uh, these bandits you know, to collect yeah. ransom. So what do we need to do about this KYC? For, I mean, to get okay, to so, nip it in the bud. So, 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 naturally, I think KYC is a fundamental process mm. for any business and also any, any bank customer. Mm. If you want to open a bank account now, the bank will require a lot of information from you. Yes, it should. To your BVN, to your NI, to your address home address, mm. to your utility bills. Mm. So, I think those things need to, you know, follow through thoroughly. Mm. If so, if before you give anybody any POS terminal, the banking agent, I mean, like the money, money point and all that, they, they, I mean, must have have they, they must definitely have the person's profile. Mm. So, if anything, if any fraud is you know perpetrated, it's easy for them to go back to that agent and say, yes. So, so person, you know, carried out a fraud, and the merchant will show it shows that the merchant or the whatever belongs to your organization. Mm. So, it's easy, but in a case where Thorough, thorough KYC is not carried out, then it's very difficult to monitor cases of fraud. Whether you like it or not, whether you like it or not, for me, I cannot remember the last time I went into a banking hall mm. for a certain transaction. I can't remember. So they've actually brought more. So the POS has evil. actually made life more easy. The mm. terminals have made life, have made life more easy to, even the, during the time of Naira scarcity, mm -hmm. whether you like it or not, even a time when the bank had no, they had no Naira notes to give. The POS were the ones saving the whole of many Nigerians. They had cash to give, mm. even though it was at, at a very high rate. But mm. the most important thing is that they were cash available there. I don't know how they were doing it. So it must have been a synergy from a, 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 an internal person in the bank giving them cash. But whether you like it or not, they have come to make a lot of things easy. But they just need to be more regulated mm. and they just need to be more uh, you know, checked every other time so they don't mm -hmm. take law into their hands. I had a POS, I, I did a wrong, an erroneous transaction hmm. some years ago to a wrong account. In the next five minutes, the person I sent the money to had already gone to a POS hmm. and was already withdrawing the money. It was a wrong, I totally sent money to a wrong person oh. from my phone. So the person already withdrew almost half a million already from the, from the money before I was able to rush to the bank hmm. to get her account blocked. So hmm. this is our issue. So if, if she had gone to the bank to withdraw that money, perhaps the bank would have asked her certain questions hmm. and any money that enters your bank account. That's why it's easier to go into the bank in order to do transactions. True. If somebody sent you money into your bank account now and you go straight into the bank in order to transfer the same money to another mm. bank, mm. the bank will ask you to wait. True. Because they have to check where the source of the money because it's too soon. Yes. The money came in barely five Anti minutes ago. You are already going into the bank yes. within the same five minutes. The bank will say no. They have to get certain approvals before they allow you to move that money. But a POS vendor will not have that. They will just collect your POS and swipe it. And that's another thing. So, in, in advanced countries, you can, with a swipe of your card on ATM, POS terminals, you can make payments. Mm. But there's a limit. Yes. There's a limit. In the UK, now, if you want to swipe, you can swipe. I think the maximum is £100. Mm. If you want to pay anything above £100, you have to impute your PIN, mm. your four-digit PIN. But in Nigeria, people just get people's... Somebody can pick up your ATM now and go to any POS terminal. Whether he likes it or not, as long as he has that CCV, CCV mm. at the back of the car, yeah. it's possible to you know penetrate into your account. So these mm. are issues. I think that people are losing money every day. People are sometimes you wake up, you see certain debit alerts on your phone, you start to ask who made this withdrawal, so, and you go to the bank. A lot of stories you hear that the money was withdrawn in uh, Enugu. You hear that the money was withdrawn in uh, Shopping. Mm, yeah, and, you, and your ATM is right in your pocket. Mm. A lot of times, even when you are, even when you enter one chance buses, a lot of these cases. Just because, just because they have access to your ATM, they are able to access all your account. And so this, I think a lot of check has to, be, has to happen with CBN. Mm. Our monies have to be secured. We have, we are, I mean, those monies that you see are insured one way or the other. Mm. So this kind of security that people have, different banks have, differ. Mm. So I think they need to constantly continue to up their technology to guide against these fraudsters. Fraudsters are now also sleeping. They want to, you know, siphon people up their money. So it depends, so it now depends on the, I mean, there was a case of a woman who cried out recently, a certain actress who cried out that certain money was withdrawn from her account, about three million, and she, mm. she didn't she did issue any withdrawal. Mm. I think one way or the other, she escalated and the thing was reversed to her account. So these are issues. Mm. So the first stars are now also sleeping. They are also trying to, they are, to be on their game too. So 
So I think there needs to be a lot of synergy between uh, CBN, uh, Hamban, uh, DSS, and Nigerian Police Security mm. Agencies to ensure that mm. there is no way you cannot totally cop fraud. No. Any country in the world, there's fraud. You cannot, even in the UK, where they have the tightest security, even in America, fraud happens every minute mm. in, in, a, in the banking sector. So, but, but at least as much as you can reduce it to mm. make, you know, to secure people's money, the better. Okay, so uh, as we begin to round off now, what about the place of um, education? As much as you've talked about regulation yeah. on the part of um, the, uh, the CBN, the DSS, and of course, Amban, let's talk about um, the genuine operators, because sometimes uh, some of these are operators uh, that uh, help to escalate this fraud or perpetrate this fraud, rather, they are illegal operators. They've not been registered. What about those who are genuine operators or who have been registered with their you know, agents and uh, sometimes uh, they fall victim too because we've had cases where, pe uh, where people, uh, some unscrupulous uh, customers who just go to them uh, in the guise of wanting to withdraw, they're not even defraud the POS operators yeah. themselves True. of their own cash. So, uh, so uh, I think before POS is handed over to a lot of these POS terminals, POS agents will be very, a lot of them are not educated. Mm. You find somebody who just feels that, oh, I'm, only, I'm jobless, what can I do? The next thing, he or she picks up POS and sits by one uh, roadside mm. and starts to transact. People will come to you with, with under the guise of transaction, they will give you, some will even transfer money to you, mm. that they transfer to your account, show you a fake alert, you give them cash and they vanish. Mm. And you will never, that money will never reflect in your account. And you, they will show you, in fact, you, you might even get fake alerts. So, mm. a lot, so that, as I'm saying that, those POS agents need to be educated properly. And I think that there should be a lot of, like you said, education in terms of how to, if you really want to go into that business, you need to, be, you need to know the proper things to do, proper things to know, how to know fraudulent customers. Because it, I've seen cases of POS vendors who will borrow cash from banks to be given to people and mm. people will come and dupe them and they, they are suicidal. Mm. So it's not just a business that, once anything that has to deal with money, it's not just something you can just double into and feel that, oh, because you are, you are high do and, and you want to start making money one way or the other, you need to understand the business because mm. you are dealing with money. Okay, so what would, you, uh, would your last word on this be as we round off? So my last word is for CBN and NEFF, the Nigerian Electronic Fraud Forum, and even the police and DSS, there should be a lot of synergy. This, these are people's money. Whether you like it or not, we are not, I mean, the, everything rises and falls on the government. Mm. As Nigerians, as our, our own is to, you know, make sure that we do our part, go to work, make money, so put your money in banks, save money. So how that money is secured mm. is not, is not what any Nigerian can do individually. Mm. It's the job of the government, government and, you know, the security agencies to ensure that people right. get value for, you know, for their money and mm -hmm. their money is secure. All right, uh, that's uh, as much as we can take. We must say a very big thank you to you, uh, Mustafa Iwinla, thank for you so your insights this thank morning. You. All right, uh, we couldn't have said it enough. As much as possible, try to be vigilant and try to observe much um, KYC as possible. And uh, don't just be in a hurry. That's to the POS operator right now. Don't just be in a hurry to just want to dispense cash when you're not certain that um, that particular money has actually reflected in your account. There are fake alerts everywhere. Just do your own due diligence and um, somehow we just hope that we can begin to nip all of these uh, fr fraudulent issues as much as possible to the barest uh, minimum. That's the size of the show for today. My name is Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being a part of it. We'll see you again next time. Bye for now.